Hello, I'm Kyle Stallings. We're here at the Tomball Museum Center on February 7, 2023, and we're here in the barn building of the museum. And we're here today to interview uh, Rhonda Metzler Scheel and um, to talk about her memories of Tomball and growing up here in Tomball. Rhonda, could you state your name for us? Rhonda Metzler Scheel. Uh, when were you born? October 15, 1950. Were you born here? In the original Tomball Hospital. Original, original. Was it the one over on Hospital uh, Street? Hospital Street. Uh, Dr. Yegi was the doctor then, and he's the one that delivered me. Dr. Yegi? Yes. And um, that's the one east of the tracks over there, right? Uh, if you say so. If, I don't know east and oh, west. Oh, okay. I can go left and right, but All east right. and west drive me crazy. All know. right. So, um, what, what was your dad's name? Henry Max Metzler. And we're here in the barn building of the museum. Yes. Did he have some involvement with the barn? He built the barn with Earl Hillegeist and Jerry uh, Weaver. They and, built this whole barn. And I understood it was quite a, a feat to get this uh, cotton gin in the barn here. Well, it was also a feat to get the crow's nest up because they had to crawl on each other's backs. Wow. Uh, to go up. Yeah. All right. And your dad, was where was he born? Huss Smith. Max Metzler is his name. What was his full name? Henry Max Metzler. Can you go back to when your family first came over to uh, yeah. the United States? Yes. We, uh, we came, of course, from Germany, like everybody else. In, um, 19, 19, uh, now you got me, 1896, I believe. And we came over on the ship James. Do you remember where they came from in Germany? It's written down. Okay. I don't remember right. offhand, but we did come through Galveston. Hey, did you ever hear any stories about why they came? <laughs> I've often wondered, but I heard of, it's probably because we were all poor in the, in the, uh, the war and poverty and um, I don't know. I've, I've often wondered that too. Yeah. But just the thought of making that trip to unknown is amazing. How strong these people were to go from known to where. And did you hear any stories about when he came through Galveston? When? Yeah. Oh, any stories about his experience of coming through well, Galveston? Well, they were they were supposed to go to. Um, property near San Antonio, but transportation somehow either wasn't arranged or, or somehow it didn't follow through. We were not to come to Rose Hill. We were to go to near, uh, I think it's Castro, near San Antonio, but we made it to Rose Hill. Hmm. That's where our transportation got us. And so uh, did he end up settling here? Yes. All right. And then what was his son's name? Do you remember that? Which, my dad's? No, what? well, that was... His dad? Was that, that was your great-grandfather? Great-grandfather was Henry Lewis okay. Metzler. And he was the second generation that... After, well, there was after one before the him. Okay. Another Henry. They just wore out the name Henry. That was <laughs> fa fairly common name? Yes, very common. All right. And did he also live in this Tomball Rose Hill yes. area? Yes. All right. Where did they settle in Rose Hill, roughly? That I'm not sure, All but right. um, Dad was born off of Stumna Airline where the Metzler Elementary School is, and um, Klein District honored us with naming a school after us. And that property, that area, was where um, his dad settled, and um, there was 12. My grandma had 12 children but only, um, let's see, there was a, a single that passed away, a, a t one twin passed away, and she had quads, and only one survived. Mm. And Daddy would uh, would go get the black, uh, would go get the midwife when it was time. So he would go get the midwife from somewhere, mm. and bring her back and deliver another baby. And roughly, where did your dad live here in the area? Well, off of Hussmith Road, um, 
where now Burroughs Park is, that area toward Kirkendall um, is where we settled. And I used to ride my bike down Husmith Road from our house down to Kirkendall and there was no one. I'd stop in the middle of Kirkendall on my bike and look up and down the road, eh, nobody. So I'd turn around, come back home. Hmm. No. Yeah. And we used to have a dirt road. It had, was not always paved. And what type uh, activities did he engage in to earn a living? Well, he, was, he worked for um, Houston Police when he was single, and then when the Depression came, he uh, let the men that had families have the job. He said, I can make a, I can make a living anywhere. So he came out here, and he became the first uh, constable here in Tombaugh. So he was constable, the first police authority here. He was the one that arranged for um, the jail. There was a jail, but he said it looked like a cow shed. He said, this is too embarrassing. This, this is not right. So he commissioned um, Harris County Commissioner's Court. He got the, the jail out here. And this desk that was here, um, they were going to throw it away. He said, oh, no, I need that in my jail. And I, I found this uh, online. It, it talks about... Henry Lewis Metzger. That's my grandpa. Okay, he was constable from, yes. what does that say, 1911? That's, that's too far away, Kyle. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 1911 to 1914. All right. But see, I thought he was JP, but it says uh, constable. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. He was in law enforcement. Yeah. And then Danny came out um, in... Um, he also was in law enforcement uh -huh. for a while? Uh-huh. For about how long did he do that? Well, until 1940. Good long time. Though. A good long time, yes. Yeah. And it was a rumor that he was sneaking women into the police station. And that was true. It was my mom. She would come in the evenings uh, and iron and just, and just spend time with him. Because he was the it. He was the only one. So, you know, of course they want to spend time. So, yes, it is true. My dad snuck in women, my mom. But I wonder back then they might not have had many customers in the jail, so it probably got pretty lonely there for him, right? Just sitting there uh, by himself, or do you know? Not, no. Pretty busy? Only, yes. Um, one of the busiest, there was a, um, a uh, saloon or a saloon uh, Oh, no, a saloon. Dance hall. And behind Concordia High School, it was for the black. So, of course, he, he patrolled that, too. Um, he would go on patrol, and somebody would say, if you didn't have that gun on, I'll, I'll show you what I'd do to you. He said, okay. He would take his gun off, hand it to somebody he could trust that wouldn't shoot him in the back, and he said, come on. And what he was afraid of were the black ladies that had garters and ice picks mm. in their garter. Mm. Um, he said, they're the more dangerous because you never knew when they were going to take an ice pick out. And I do have the ice picks that he took. Wow. Uh -huh, I have them. Mm -hmm. That sounds so like a that, pretty dangerous area to It about. is. And, and he, so therefore, that area is called Ice Pick Corner, and he's the one that named it. So that's where Concordia High Behind School is Behind Concordia. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That area. And then he got a call one night on 149 in the back of the day. He said, there's um, someone asleep on 149. So here he goes. And true enough, somebody had taken their shoes off, put it right beside them. They were asleep, and there was a 22 rifle. So he goes up there, picks the rifle up, picks the shoes up, picks the guy up, and we're coming to jail. <laughs> and we still have the 22. Wow. And that's what my brother and I learned to shoot on hmm. was that 22 rifle that was on 149. So I guess there were interesting characters around Tomball. Oh yeah. yeah. You either loved my daddy or hated him because he knew more about people than, you know, he knew about people. Did you hear or remember any more stories that he would tell about his days in law enforcement? Well, you know, they don't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's like the military. They don't, they don't talk. Yeah. Um, and I didn't ask mom a lot because there's same things little kids don't need to know. Sure. And so that's the things I have heard him. 
Well, it's really other people said. Because some said, I hate your daddy. I said, okay. And then they said, I love your daddy. Okay. So you knew which side yeah. they were on. He probably yeah. arrested them or some family member or caught them doing yeah. something shouldn't. Sure. So, and that's still, that hasn't changed. Sure. Nothing's changed. What about your grandfather, uh, Henry Lewis? Well, he, he died when I was two. Ah, I so I do not remember him. He um, um, lived in Husmith down from Mills, which was not Mills, which there was no Mills, uh, but that one of those houses is where he lived, and that's where he passed away. Uh, but I was just two. You so don't remember know. hearing any stories about him? Well, I heard stories. Okay. You remember any of them you want to share? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No. Right. Some things kids don't need to know. Yeah. So uh, another thing I found online was okay. from 1938, it looked like the marriage certificate of your dad. That's them. With your, your That's mother. Them. Yes. What was her name? Grace Shera. Shera. Shera, uh-huh. How did y'all pronounce it? Shera. Ah. And you tell us about the Shera family around, I've heard of them around Spring Creek Park and, and around yes. Salem Cemetery. Yes, uh, that's where they settled. Um, and that we did, used to own Spring Creek Park, that land, that property. Um, and George Shera donated the, the land uh, for Salem Cemetery. And the house he was he lived in is still there. Um, what is the street? Uh, Lutheran Cemetery Road. No, before that. Coming down from Powder Mill. Oh, Brown Road. B Brown. Yeah, it's still there. All right. Mm -hmm. Is it the one on top of the hill that we see there? Mm -hmm. All right. Beautiful. Yeah, I've been in it one time. It's just beautiful. Another mm -hmm. thing I found online that looked like your, your dad's draft card. And <laughs> Interestingly, it didn't have the date on it, but you can calculate the date from what's written on there. It looked like it was done around 1941. Mm -hmm. So does that list his parents on there? Um, Henry, well, no. No, okay. Does not. Right. Um, his mom was from Louisiana. Ah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where did the Scherer family come from? Somewhere in, in Germany. Germany. Came over about the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd like to go back to your your family. So, um, you had Max was your dad. Yes. And your and, mother. And grandpa was, well, Max and uh, Louis was the grandpa. Both yeah. Hendrys. Yeah. And y your mother's name again is Grace Cheryl. Grace. And um, we have you. How many other siblings did you have? I have a brother, family? Jack. Did, my brother. Did he also live a lot around this area? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. We don't travel far. All right. Any There's other, no reason. Any other siblings in your family? No. That's all. Mm -hmm. And we've heard of a Dr. Messler. How yes. is he related He's to He's a you? cousin to Daddy. Yeah. And you remember anything about his doctor practice around the area? Or yes. You know we it? have the um, his um, his ledger of all his births. And I've heard stories about him wearing out horses, going to the deliveries. Um, the college has the, delivery, the ledger, and even my mom and aunt are in there when they were born, how much they weighed, and, and uh, so interesting. And I got that from Charles Hill, which I encourage y'all to visit with him. He's where I got the uh, Dr. Metzler safe that's still at my brother's house, and um, the ledger is just unbelievable, fascinating, that that is still preserved and is at the library. That's very interesting. It's nice it that is. we still have those kind of records. Yes, right? yes. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so besides, we've seen Henry several times used in your family. Were there any other traditional names used in down through the generations that you remember? No, they just wore out those two. Okay. That one. Yeah. Well, Jacob is one. Jacob Metzler. And he's even further back. But Jacob was another common name in our family. Good. Um, did your parents meet in this area? <laughs> yes. 
How did that Daddy's come story. All right. This is Daddy. Now he's he likes to tell stories. He said I saw Mama walking across the street and whistled at her, and she turned around, and I knew she was the one. Now, I don't know. You know, Daddy was just full of it sometimes. But that's the story that he told. Do you have memories of his involvement here at the museum or stories that Constant. you could tell us? I have yeah. lifetime of memories because we were involved, too. We were always here for everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. I remember reading about barn days back then where they created the collection we yes. have here where yes. they, they got people from the community coming in bringing yes. items to donate. Yes. And whenever someone said, I have, that he said, when can I pick it up? He didn't, he didn't care. He said, he just, yes, I'll be there. Do I need a truck, trailer, what do I need to come get it? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a hustler on this. He loved this place. Yeah. Well, we do have a beautiful collection here of yes, old it's tools, beautiful. old farm equipment. Mm -hmm. It's nice that he had the vision to create this back oh, then. Oh, yeah. And he um, donated one of the uh, jail saws, even though his name's not on it, but he did donate it. And it took six men to lift it. So happy. Because it was at our house hmm. in Husmith, and he wanted it up here. So he. I don't know, I don't remember, but I remember it was so difficult and so heavy to bring it up here. Mm. Yeah, we have yes. it, the iron, cast iron, yes. jail cells. In yes, back and here. one of those should have his name on it. Oh, nice. Yes. We'll have to look into that. We're going to have to straighten that out. Yeah, thank you. So, going to Tomball in general, when you were growing up here, what did it feel like as a community? Well, we knew everyone, and what was so nice, we were all poor, but we didn't know it. We helped each other out. If there was a hardship, we helped. If we had a hardship, they helped. And we never saw the blacks and whites. We worked alongside them. We didn't know there was, we were prejudiced till much later on. And Daddy was on the school board, and um, he was involved with the blacks, you know, the school. And somebody had asked me about the high school. Well, where ACC, that business is, that, that's the school from, for, I don't know if they had kindergarten, first grade all the way to high school, was in that one building. There was no separate buildings at all. And then after desegregation, I think it became the junior high because I went there for two yeah. years, yeah. seventh and eighth yeah. grade. Yeah. Um, I needed to go back. You said Dr. Yegi. Um, yes. I think, was that named Leon Hospital? Does that ring Yes, a bell? that's after, well, he's, Dr. Yegi is the one that started Tombaugh Hospital. Okay. And it was before 19, I think it was 1948, because I was born there in 50. And then when Dr. Graham came along, they had issues, apparently. So uh, he built Leon Memorial on Main Street, which is now Jimmy Pussock's vet clinic. Hmm. And I used to work there as a candy striper. Ah. And what did you do as a candy striper back then? Oh, nothing. I thought it was a big deal, but it's not. Uh, fill water jugs, pass out trays, you know, just simple stuff, change, change beds. And I think my sister did that a little while. Did y'all? I think have, she did too. Did y'all have like a white and striped? A striped, and I still yeah. have it. A little yeah. hat thing. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a memory of those. Yeah. Things. Why do I keep this stuff? See. <laughs> Interesting. But it's fun. So, when you were growing up in Tomball, did y'all have quite a few cousins? And, uh, we're related other, to everyone. Lots of shares and Metzlers and. Are y'all related also to the Tices? Oh yeah, Butch Tice. Mom and Butch are first cousins. Mom's, uh, I mean, Butch's mom was a sheriff, Rosie Sheriff. And other uh, Every, related families around? Everyone, yes. Yeah. yes. So you had lots of cousins around? Lots of cousins. We, um, my um, E.P. Kleb was a, um, well, uncle. He was a great uncle. He had the sawmill down in Klein and we had family reunions down there, and we would get under the stacks, and that's where the kids would get under there and eat. Hmm. 
talk about fun. We just thought that was just the greatest thing to get under the stacks that were drying. That was the slabs of wood that mm -hmm. were angled up to dry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you remember, was that, uh, what drove that, what powered that sawmill? Was it electric or steam or? Yeah. I'm not that old. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I was a kid, so yeah. I didn't care. We, yeah. just, we just went and had fun. Have you heard any stories about other sawmills in the area? Well, Daddy had a sawmill. Where was his? Uh, at High Smith, where we lived. And uh, he, he uh, would load the logs with mules. There was nothing automated about anything. Um, so he had a sawmill there. And we would have um, some families from Husmith walk from Husmith to our place and uh, work and they walk back. And mom would feed them two meals. Um, she would usually, she would shoot the squirrels, hmm. but she would not let daddy skin them because he said he can't skin a squirrel. So she would give the squirrel to, you know, one of the, the workers and, and she'd fry them up and, you know, they'd eat squirrel. Do you have any of her old recipes? Just by memory. Hmm. I mean, there's just some things you just don't write down, but I made her a few, like her chocolate pie. Oh my gosh. But I, you know, I said, Mom, you, I've got to know these things. And so I did stand there while she cooked. You know, but it's just a hand-me-down, mm -hmm. like I've handed it down to my my daughter. She can make that chocolate pie just as good as mom. Nice. It's nice yeah. to have those handed down memories. Yes, yes, it's great. Yeah. So, what schools did you go to? Where were they located? Just the ones in Tombo. All the. Well, I started out in. Um, um, the Lutheran school, my first grade. Was that at the Zion or mm -hmm. the uh, Salem? Zion, Zion, where they were combined. Yeah. And then I went, went to the school on, uh, well, where Klein's used to be, um, off of Kiefer and Lubenhausen, in that, oh. that, there. Okay, that's, it's now the VA hospital, the VA center there? Across, yeah. Across mm -hmm. from there. Oh, okay, that's yeah. Tomball Elementary. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where Tomball okay. Elementary. Yeah, right. And that's where uh, my husband and I had our really first date. That's where we had the prom in the cafeteria. But, you know, horrors, which could we do that now? But that was a big thing because we had the prom in the cafeteria at Tomball Elementary. I remember that elementary school, and that's where they had the big bonfire down where the veterinary clinic is there now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember those? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we stayed there until Tomball High School burned. So my group went to the First Baptist for school. Um, so we were all split every different direction. But that's where my group went was the First Baptist Church um, until they got the high school rebuilt. Uh, I've seen the records where that high school burned, so I mm -hmm. guess it took a, a year or two to get things back to normal. I don't know. I was a kid. Yeah. I didn't care. Sure. I don't care. And what high school did you go to? Tomball High School. The one on Main Street. The one on was, Main Street. Once it was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if if the name Metzler did it change any when the family migrated to Texas? Somebody said and I don't remember who somebody is, that it was M-A-T, Matzler. And I had never heard that before. I've never seen it in writing, but I was told that, so I don't know. Yeah. So many names did get changed through the immigration right. process. Right, just like Tice, one S and two S, and there's a reason. Do you know that story? I've heard that. What did you hear? Because about of that? the mail. Because everybody was getting everybody's mail so they said we're going to have to change this so Tomball um, had the two S's and the client had one S's hmm. I think I think or is vice versa anyway it was two S's and one because of the mail and it all came through Husmith post office I think it was probably pretty helpful back when most people were named Henry or other I mean, names that, that were similar, yeah they right? were no, not creative here back then <laughs> Did y'all have any um, 
traditions carried on in Texas off of German no. roots? Not that I know of. What work about, hard. The, all we knew was work hard. All right. What about any food or recipes, things like that? You don't know? Okay. No. Did any of your ancestors that lived in this area speak German still? Oh, uh, mom did some. And then, of course, if you don't use it, you lose it. But my husband spoke German. And um, one time we were, we were working the, the um, elections, and they wanted somebody bilingual. And I said, got it covered. My husband speaks German. <laughs> and I thought it was funny. They didn't. <laughs> But he did speak German. Yeah. His side did more than my side. And what's his full name? Who? Which? Your husband. Uh, Marvin Manuel Scheel. And who were his parents? Monty and I of Bradingham. See, I'm related on that side. The Bradinghams also. That's, that's a whole nother. Yeah. yeah. But you know, one thing that you talked um, when we came over, we were told you do not speak German. You're in America now. You will not speak German. I remember that. All right, so on the Shield side, you had um, his grandmother was a Bradigam? His mother was a Bradigam? My husband's mother was a Bradigam. All right. And his dad on the, his dad was William Shield. And he married Ida Miller, I believe. Is that M-U-E-L-L-E-R? M-I. M-I. It's, okay. Yeah, it's not the Mueller. It's okay. the Miller. And then the, the Bradigam side was, um, I knew I'd have a blank here. Ida uh, was his, well, his mother and grandma were both Idas. And so that was confusing. Yeah. And a lot of these ladies died in childbirth, and the men would remarry, and they have another set of, children and then I can't keep up with all of them. Yeah. Uh, roughly where did the Shields live around the Tumble Well they area? started out in Cypress and then they moved to Decker Prairie. There's a Shield Road uh, right down from my house and that's where their home place was and the Brannigans are right next to us, the, the home place um, and a cousin lives there, Sandra Brannigan. She still owns the home place. Is this the Bradinghams that had the store up here in Tom Cousins, Hall? yes. Cousins. GW, mm-hmm. All cousins, mm-hmm. So, uh, growing up in Tomball, um, what, what type of clubs or interests did y'all have or do as kids? Well, Mom and Dad were older, so I didn't get away with anything. So I did not participate in a lot of things. I um, joined the, the uh, Medical Careers Club, and Mrs. Parker was a school nurse. She was an Army nurse, and I absolutely loved her, and she's the one that influenced me to be a nurse. I just love Mrs. Parker. So you started out with candy stripers, and how did you become a nurse after that? Well, Mom and Dad, even though they did not have much ed education, they said, um, where do you want to go to school? It was not, do you want to go to school? It was, where do you want to go to school? So um, I wanted to be a nurse, so I went to Texas Women's University. And I am an RN with a um, Bachelor of Science. Is that a uh, university up in near Denton, Fort Worth? Denton, oh, Denton. Denton. Denton, that's right. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, then where did you work nursing? I started out at Montgomery County Hospital um, because when you get out of school, you don't know anything. You just you just hope you remember what you were supposed to and not kill anybody that day. So um, that's where I started, just to get experience. Is that in Conroe? Conroe, yes. And when I drove to Conroe, there was nothing. No lights, no traffic, because I worked the evening shift. So nothing, it was me. And that was a little eerie, because once in a while I kind of drift off to sleep because I was so tired. Um, but anyway, grace of God, we're still okay. And then babies came, and so um, I did not want to go back shift work because husband worked shift work for the line company. So I became a school nurse. So I just retired this in January after 30, whew, 38 years. 
So you ended up doing the same thing Ms. Parker was doing back when yes. in, in elementary school. Just loved her. Yes, yes, I did that. And now at football games, she was the one that went on the field. There was no trainers. It was Ms. Parker down there on the field taking care of the, the players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good history of nursing. Did mm -hmm. um, any of your kids want to be a nurses? Oh, no. <laughs> no <they had laughs> My daughter can put on a Band-Aid. She's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, she taught school for um, 15 years until it just got crazy, as we all know it. Um, so now she has a Small Cakes franchise on 2920, right before you get to Hooks Airport in 99. Um, son is um, um, an appraiser at Waller. He just got his master's, mm -hmm. and he's going to keep going, pursue his PhD, and he's on the Tomball School Board, just like Daddy was. So I'm very proud of, pretty proud of my kids. Very nice. Uh, See, so he's on the Tomball School Board? Right now, yes. Nice. And y'all are kin to the folks running Honor Coffee, too? Yes, we just had the, uh, the uh, ribbon cutting. Yes, that's uh, cousins. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill's dad and Marvin's dad were brothers. Great. So we were there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember much from high school about uh, anything that's memorable to you? Well, we won a lot. <laughs> we did good. Um, and again, going back to Daddy, we had a um, the concession stand. He said again, "This looks like a, you know, a metal barn building." So he was he got. Um, Concession stands on both sides because everybody was at that one. He said, this is nuts. So we got the two on both sides. And the uh, tax office had leaking issues. And he said, uh-uh, oh, no. So he got a new tax office. It's not like him himself, but, you know, he was involved. Help put it together. Help put it together. Because he said, no, that's people's property. We, we can't have this in Tomball. And do you recall the... The concession stands on both sides. Was that at the high school on Main Street? The there? only school we had. Yeah, back then. Yeah, back then. All right. What was your most memorable event uh, growing up in Tomball? Graduating. Graduating. <laughs> yeah, getting out of Tomball. Everybody thinks we got to get out of Tomball. And, but guess what? We come back. Come back and still we live We come here. back. That's right. Mm -hmm. What's your best memory about the Tomball Museum? being here all the time, being proud of my family involvement, because we were here, we were just here. This was part of our life. Whenever the, um, the, uh, we had the wassail and the tours, we were here. Uh, we have the granite marker out yes. here for your dad. Yes. At, at, right in front of the barn building. Uh, what does that commemorate? Well, a lot of hard work and whenever, um, we have special events. We had the kids come up and have pictures around that that uh, stone to remember Daddy. Nice. Like when my daughter got married, we were there because so Daddy could be a part. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, in in elementary school, did you have any? teachers that you particularly remember? Oh, Mrs. Odom. She was lovely. And Danny hired Mr. Odom. So that doesn't have anything one way or the other. But Mrs. Odom was exceptionally wonderful. So you're talking about Earl Odom. Earl Odom's, he, he, uh, uh, well, we didn't call him by their first names. Sure. It was Mrs. Odom. We didn't, Yeah. for the life of me, I cannot think of her first name. I can't either right now. But <laughs> I remember from elementary school. Yeah. So he became the elementary school principal. Yes, he did. And she was a teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. um, what about in high school? Do you have any memorable teachers from there? Oh, there are some more memorable than others. But I remember um, we'd go on the science club. We'd go to different outings. And we'd go to like Burnett and Rock Hunt and and that was so much fun. And we had a, a mom, Mrs. Edna Welch. 
she showed us how to make a bedroll. And I went, oh my, looky here. And we're gonna sleep on the ground. And I went, oh, I don't know about this. But she did, she showed us how to make the bedroll. Hmm. And it worked beautifully, because we would stay in uh, gyms at high schools. Who was your science teacher that would Mr. Take those Reichert. R E I C K E R T, I think. Reichert. Yeah, he was a science, and I love science. That's why I guess I have a Bachelor of Science. But I love science, and, and that was so interesting to go and look at the rock formations. And, and uh, of course, we could not take a rock home. <laughs> we all chuckled. It wasn't our bedroll. Mm -hmm. We're good. Sure. Um, do you remember any clubs or other organizations in high school that you're involved with? Well, I was in the band, and then the Medical Careers Club. I guess now is HOSA, I think is the modern. And I used to help with HOSA. I used to um, certify nurses' aides. I'd help the teacher go to nursing homes, and I'd help certify the, the students. So when they left high school, they could go and get a job. Who was the band director? Oh my goodness, Mr. Chambers. Leonard Chambers. Is there another, is there yeah. another band director? Well, I've heard of that before then. There was an earlier, or some earlier ones, but that's the ones that's most the people one, remember. Yeah. And he's the one that introduced Grandioso. March that, Grandioso. Yes, that's when, that's when I was in the band. And one time the band didn't play it, and I fussed. I said, okay, where's Grandioso? Of course, they had a good excuse. And I said, okay, we need that back. And then the Cougar Claw was the newspaper during when I was in high school. So uh, we had a contest to name the paper. So the Cougar Claw is the one that won. Nice. Yeah. Um, were there any particular holidays that your family liked to celebrate more than others? Well, Thanksgiving, without a word being said, we would get up and go to Kyle, um, Texas. That's where my cousins lived, and that's where we went every Thanksgiving. There was no discussion, no, do you want to go? No, you'd get up and you'd go. Which family? Was it was um, Dad's mama's side. What was their name? Their name was Clark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that was very special to be with all the family then. Tell me about the house you grew up in. It was on Husmith Road and Daddy built it. Do you remember how he built it or what it looked like? Well he had yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I remember what it looked sure. like. I sure. lived in it. Yeah. So he uh well, because he had the sawmill. And so he um he built it as he got wood, mm -hmm. as he got money, as he could. Did he add on through the years, right? No. No, no it was just three bedroom, one bath, because that's all we needed mm -hmm. was that one bath. And it was a very nice, comfortable house. Is it still there? No, because we had to sell that property because Woodlands was infringing on us and other subdivisions. So uh, here I'm going to be a little tacky. I'm not. Mm. Uh, the people that adjoin us think our property belonged to them, so they would hunt, they mm -hmm. would run their dogs, mm -hmm. their kids would come over, fish in our pond. No, you stay over there. Mm -hmm. So, and mom was a widow then, and we just couldn't, we just couldn't leave her like that. And so we finally ended up selling that property to the Woodlands. You remember what year that house was built, roughly? Uh, Do you know? Fifties. I think 52. Where did they live before that area? The house in front of it. Ah. Daddy had a house in front, and then he built the house, this, well, I grew up in, in back of it. And then he sold the front one off. So I guess your family's seen incredible change over in that area close to the woodlands. Good and bad. Yeah because um, the bridge was not always there on Kirk and Island. It was a dead end, and Mr. Swinley had a pond there, and people would go fishing there. And so 
when they started billing that, I said, Daddy, nothing good is going to come of this, is it? He said, no. Yeah. Kind of opened up. It changed our life, yes. Yeah. Yes. I've heard of other sawmills around that area that um, between the woodlands, what's now the woodlands, and back toward uh, Decker's Prairie. Do you remember any other I remember sawmills? the Grogan one. The Grogan? Grogan's mill, mm-hmm. And I ended up taking care of one of the Grogan's in the hospital when I worked. I went, what, what chances are these, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and Mr. Swiley at the dead end had a, had a mill. And then Daddy had a mill. And I think that's all I remember. What were meal times like in your family? There were meal times, and we all sat down together. It wasn't, um, it wasn't like now. You sit down and you ate, and you ate what you ate. Yeah. There was no, I don't like this. Do you remember um, some of the cars that your parents had when you were growing up? Oh, what, yeah. But now that you brought that up, my husband's um, inherited his grandma's 51 Chevrolet Deluxe, and I'm in the process of having it restored. Very nice. Yeah. And I wanted to do it years ago, but husband said, no, he, he was not interested. So now that costs are up, materials are hard to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get it restored. So, um, yeah, we had Chevrolets. Um, Impala. I remember the Impala with the wings that went out. And when we went on trips, we would sleep in the back, mm -hmm. you know, up on the back of the... The back deck the, uh, mm -hmm. behind the seat. Yeah, we'd go down the road and just had a great time. Did y'all take vacations back then? To Kyle and Luli. That's where Daddy's brother. We didn't take vacation, vacation. It was going to see family because that was more important. Do you remember when you came to learn to drive? Did, did they have it in school or how did you learn? Well, uh, yes, in ninth grade we were taught driver's ed. Well, I was 14 when I got my driver's license. That was scary. And my first trip from Husmith, well, where I lived was to Husmith. Uh, Right where Mel's is, you was Lambert's store. It was a little drive in, you know. So I was terrified, terrified. And I said, can I go to Lambert's and buy whatever? Yes, but you better be careful. Well, I was just terrified. And so I went from where we lived to Lambert's store and back again. Didn't see a car. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anybody to be afraid of because mm -hmm. there wasn't anybody there. But that's where Mel's is now. Do you remember who who was the teacher that taught you? Do you recall? Uh, Coach Powell. 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 P O W E L L. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you ride the bus to school? Or oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Do you remember when your family got your first television? Roughly when that might have been. I've never not known a TV. I've, we've always had always one, had one. Mm -hmm. and we were the first ones on our road to have a phone. So we had people come use our phone, our neighbors, until they got you know their own. But we had the first phone. Do you remember your phone number still from Swift, back then? Swift. Um, it was S W Swift. <sighs> yeah. I think a lot of people had Swift S S W it and it was, was S W five, five and later it became like two five five something like that something yes like that. and it was a party line. Tell Sometimes us, that was entertaining. Tell us about the party line for people that don't know that. Well, I don't know how many we had. Either four or six were joined on a party line, and you'd hear the phone ring. It was by rings, how, you know who if if it was your call. But being a kid and having nothing else to do, pick it up very quiet to listen. And it was boring. So it just went out very quiet. But they knew. Yeah. They knew somebody was on that line. Yeah. You could listen into your neighbor's sure. calls. Right? Sure. So some of the 
early businesses we we mentioned uh, the Bradigham store did yes. you go up there very much when you oh, were yes. kids yes yeah. yes because they had the locker boxes because nobody had freezers so when we killed a processed a pig or, or cow we go and rent a, a locker box in the back and that was just normal and then whenever we were checking out they had those round pink candies and they were so good and they were a nickel so daddy would let me buy one from Mrs. Bradigan who mm -hmm. now turned to be my um, husband's family I went mm, didn't know I was gonna be part of this family yeah. but and it was just great it's just a simple life and it was wonderful how about Klein's do you remember much about Klein's oh, yeah. grocery store yes um, whenever we crossed the street I would hold mama's skirt I don't know why there was hardly anybody on the road, but, but how many women wear dresses? But I was whole mama's skirt when we crossed the street to go to Klein's. And then I wanted to go barefooted because I love being barefooted. She says, you will never be barefooted because men spit. You will never go barefooted unless you're at home. Mm -hmm. And man, I listened to that. And that was true. I went, ooh, yeah. Mama was right. Are there any other Tomball buildings or Tomball businesses that are memorable to you? Well, it's, um, it was the pharmacy. Um, Mr. Ward, he had the counter and the cherry coats, oh, were so good. We'd get up on the, on the stool and order a cherry Coke. So good. We thought poor people have come to town. We got a cherry Coke today. I remember those. Uh, yeah. Around stools where you, kinda, yeah. you could twirl around as you a kid. You did twirl around, and then you get fussed at. <laughs> Quit doing that. And then we had one other pharmacist, and I cannot remember his name. He never could get my name right. He would always put Wanda on it and not Rhonda. Didn't say anything. We just went on. I've heard of a Livingston's pharmacy. Is no, it was older than that. Okay. That's fine. For the, yeah. Any other businesses or buildings around Tomball that you have memories oh, of? Oh, yeah. yeah. Winona Theater. Uh-huh. That was, again, poor people coming to town to see a movie. Daddy and I would go see Westerns, and I still I have a billboard, you know, of Winona, original. And it was so much fun. I think uh, the younger people around Tomball probably don't know much about that. How many screens does that theater have? Screens? <laughs> One? One screen. One screen. So they were showing one movie per day, right? And the and the seats did not rock. They didn't lean back. <laughs> you just sat there. Weren't near as plush as the ones. That no, were there. no, yeah. no, no. Do you remember any movies you saw there? John yeah. Wayne, yeah. Roy Rogers. Yeah. yeah. Good. Oh, and then um, the um, oh, what was the drive for? You probably, you probably remember this. The drive-in. We don't leave school and go get a hamburger for quarter. Goodsons. No, 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 no. Okay. The drive right by the high school. Oh, yeah, goalpost. Goalpost. That's yeah. it. And we could leave school and go eat and go back to school. Yeah, I still remember those hamburgers. The good old mustard hamburgers. Oh, really good. weren't they good? Very good. Very good. Yes. Goalpost. Yeah, that was right there, past the tax office. Right building, there. Right right there right near that old high school on mm -hmm. main street mm -hmm.